Now go! Let the legend come back to life. For a lot of my video game reviews, I always go into details, introduce myself, and just go on with it. But with Metal Gear Solid 5 The Phantom Pain, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to start off with an example, something really big in my personal opinion. The Phantom Pain is a lot like a baseball game on the last inning with the tied-up score with your favorite team and your opponent's team. And it's tied up, right? And the, lat and the batter that's up at the, at the plate. His last swing matters. It's a full count, three balls, two strikes. And when, when the pitcher throws the ball at him, he doesn't just hit the ball with this little strength. He uses full force, hits that bad boy. It flies out of the ring. The audience is cheering. Everyone is having momentum. Everyone's roaring with air. And the batter comes to the whole plate. And everyone is cheering. The team is excited. The ball flies out of the ring, hits a car window, breaks through the window, makes the alarms go off, makes other alarms go off. It's that much of momentum that Metal Gear Solid 5 defense have aimed. This game is that good, and basically one of my favorite games ever made, and one of all time. It's that good of a game, and the wait for this game, while long, has been worth it every single minute. This game deserves a masterpiece in my personal opinion. It's that good of a game, and it's up there with other games I fell in love with throughout the years, or the time I've been alive. So, in other words, if you just wanted to leave the video right now, my impression, I can just tell you that Phantom Pain is an achievement from Kojima Productions for his last title from Co for the Metal Gear series. A true evolution in the gaming series, and a true statement that the series, while could evolve, can never really go on without Kojima. I'll go deeper into this review, and I'll explain a lot about more about the story, the gameplay, and graphics. That way, you can get the full treatment of how good this game really is. And if you just want to leave right now, I'm telling you right now, this game is a complete recommendation, no matter where you buy it, on the next gen, your old consoles, or your PC masters for those gamers out there who love PC. Overall, if you really wanted a game to get stuck into, Metal Gear Solid 5 Phantom Pain is that for you. Now it's time to get more deep into the video game. Let's find out more, shall we? Kept you waiting, huh? You've been in a coma for quite some time. Yes, yes, I know. You would like to know how long. I'm afraid it's been nine years. Metal Gear Solid Phantom Pain takes place nine years after the events of Ground Zeroes. Basically dealing with Snake and after waking up in a coma, basically, from the nine years he was put in. He wakes up in a hospital in Cyprus, where we are at. As soon as he wakes up, he is, gets attacked by Cypher, an enemy of Big Boss, or Snake, or Punished Venom Snake as he is called, or as his, as his credit name is in the game, basically. Um, however, I, I found the story here to actually be a lot more of a big building work here. As Snake, after Snake gets out of the hospital, he must find his old partners, make Mother Beast once again be strong team, and once as always, fight evil, stop Zero or Cypher, and then defeat Skullface, which is uh, one of Zero's big villains. He's a man with a shredded past, with no name, no face, really, and no real identity. Now, the story here actually has a lot of hidden secrets. The story doesn't really tell it through uh, story, like, t t stereotypical ways of storytelling. Instead, it tells it through the gameplay, and actually through the cassette tapes you find the, the gameplay by playing the story. The more you play, the more cassette tapes you find, and these cassette tapes give you a backstory on some characters, what are their motives, and what do they really want to do. This is something I never thought I would see in Metal Gear game. For a uh, Metal Gear series, this is a true evolution, as it feels nothing really like the other games. Now, you may think that's a bad thing, but for some reason, the Phantom Pain does all this perfectly with, its, with the way they tell the story, with the way they deal with the gameplay and boss battles. It feels so different that it, it is in truly an evolution of the Metal Gear franchise. The, and it's the final Metal Gear still on by director, creator, and writer Hideo Kojima. That is really saying something, and that's really, truly, I must just say, top notch. The writing, the dialogue written by uh, the actors used is top notch once again, like always, with some really great emotional dialogue, with some true meaning behind it. If you really listen, it has some really dark sentiments. And surprisingly, Metal Gear Solid Fire Dance of Pain is the darkest chapter in the series. You know, with the themes of child soldiers, tortures, nuclear battles, uh, possibilities of another destructive war. It deals
deals with these themes while also adding supernatural elements that we've seen in the series ever since the beginning. And that's saying a lot. So same for a director like Kojima to mix that type of storytelling with really big, disturbing type of themes and then add supernatural storytelling in there, it, he does it perfectly. He's kind of like one of those writers or storytellers that know how to do it perfectly and to keep it evened out, you know? It doesn't just force, it doesn't say forced on one side. It melds them both together to make this futuristic old war storyline. And it's one of those storylines that's been gripping ever since the beginning, and I'm proud of it. And the performances, of course, is top notch for Kiefer Sutherland as a mostly quiet snake, but it's also thanks to the other actors that help bring the, the story to life. With its side characters, its old characters, and its new characters. New characters like Skullface, Code Talker, and of course, Quiet, the more controversial woman, which I really don't care about anymore. I mean, she, her, her reason for the way she is is kind of uh, kind of sad in my personal opinion, and it got me kind of a little teared up. I mean, the game can get really emotional at times with some sequences that can really grip at the heart, and that's truly saying something from a Metal Gear game. You know, I mean, not that Metal Gear games don't have true emotions, but I never felt emotion like that before. Saying that, the main storyline can take you somewhere between 40 to 60 hours if you want to complete the entire way through it. There's, there's two chapters of this, of this game, and there's like two to three endings all together. It goes on and on. It's like a, the game is all like an episodic TV series. So when you're done with the game, you're never completely done because there's always something else to do. It's really amazing how the, 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 the team actually worked with the story here. And surprisingly, uh, Phantom Pain also answers a lot of questions that we've been asking since the beginning, and I'm glad because of it. But it doesn't answer every single question. It leaves a question or two open for interpretation for us to make us think of. And I'm glad for that, as I love that type of storytelling. It's much of an ambiguity that I always love. And the ending to this game is satisfying. The final ending, which I have not spoiled for you. As this game has a lot of great plot twists, conspiracies, espionage, the, the, the usual Metal Gear style stuff that you get from the past, you get it here, and it's all satisfying once again, you know? And that's it for the story. It gets everyone strikes right with its intense dark themes of torture, child soldiers, and much more like, dark themes that you won't see coming. And I'm glad that Metal Gear Solid has really matured and evolved into a much more impressive gaming experience than it ever felt before. There is a lot to talk about when it comes to gameplay in The Phantom Pain. The game has, how can I say it, so much to talk about that I'm going to try to put, uh, create as much as information as much as possible in this segment right here. Now, the tutorial of this game, which takes at least an hour, teaches you the basic controls. How to move, how to crouch, how to take cover, how to aim, shoot, how to change shoulder, um, shoulder cover, and how to aim in first person. But that's just the beginning of what Metal Gear Solid has to show you. The game also, uh, the more you play, you also learn a lot more about the gameplay. You can learn about taking um, soldiers, rogue soldiers, and interrogating them by asking information about uh, important information towards the mission your task you're looking for. Or you can, you can even use a full-term recovery system, which is basically like a little parachute system which flings your enemies into the air. And basically, you can just take them to your base and they become one of your soldiers. But the game does not just limit just the soldiers. If you upgrade your Fulton recovery system, you can be able to actually bring in many things. Anything that isn't bolted down to the ground. Stuff like vehicles, like trucks, tanks, cars, animals, gun emplacements, uh, more weapons, and all the soldiers you need. You can basically make your own army special. And I really do love the gameplay. The Fulton recovery system is really cool as you basically you, uh, you bring in unique soldiers who have special abilities. And this all goes to your mother base a lot more than expected. 
Now, why? It's real simple, actually. Here, um, the re the reason why is, is that your full your mother base has units and teams. There's your research and development team. There's your intelligence team. There's your security team. Your medical team. And teams just go on and on to basically to the point where you have all your crews together for this uh, to basically and what these teams are made for is when you are your mother base or anywhere you can basically ask your team to develop weapons gear uh, grenades vehicle armor weapon armor for yourself skins anything and it all requires you to really uh it, it requires you to go out there to and basically t and uh, grab all these uh, soldiers that you find keep as many as alive as possible basically and that's what's Fun about Metal Gear is that you can decide whether to kill all your enemies, or it's like headshot them all, or stab them in the chest, wait, like choking them out and then stabbing them, or you can just choke them out and stun them and then take them back to your base. I do love the open world approach that the, the um, Kojima took with this game, to, and I really do enjoy what they've done with this game overall with this open approach. There's even an amazing day and night cycle. You have a clock that uh, basically time goes by in a realistic type of way. After a while, it turns to nighttime, and then after a while again, the sunset rises, and then dawn rises, and then dusk rises. It goes on and on, and it just has this realistic type of feel to it that I really do love at times. Now, when it comes to boss battles, I had to say I was really just kind of surprised at how they actually designed them in the round. The other boss battles in the game required you to kind of figure out things in your own situation. While this boss, these boss battles have really great spectacle. Take this boss battle for example. Halfway throughout the game, you, at, at, at around chapter maybe 15 maybe, you have to do a, a hiding, like a chase scene with this gigantic Metal Gear right here. And then you have to fight it again later. The spectacle of this boss battle, while the way they defeat this boss is purely simple. Just shoot the enemy. It's full. It's fully awesome to see its spectacle just rise elevation to the highest engram. And of course, other boss battles are also great. Uh, could be satisfying. However, they can be a little hard for those who doesn't understand how to fully defeat them in the way the game wants you to. Now, um, I in terms of problems, I didn't really have that many. Not much to really lower the score down from a masterpiece. And the only thing I felt weird about the game is that. If you really want to get to the later levels, which have much more explanation and storytelling, you need to do uh, levels from the past, but with certain um, tasks, stuff like super hard mode, or if you get detected once, game over mode, or subsistence mode, where basically you have nothing. These are fine, but I feel like they sometimes felt unnecessary to do them. I mean, I, I wish we had more story missions. That way, I would have been fine with what we had. Saying that, though, Problems like this never hurt the game too much to really just be disappointing at all. Really. I really did enjoy everything about the gameplay. To the uh, night vision goggles, to night vision goggles we use, to the cycle, and you can even uh, pick up the material containers. And what these do is it basically gives you resources to basically expand your teams, your medical teams, your research teams, and you can even expand your. Uh, Bases um, online features, which will come, which will also help with Metal Gear Online. However, the biggest thing surprise is the buddy system. The buddy system is a really unique system. You get uh, four buddies. I'll tell them all right now. You get your D horse, your D dog, your D walker, and Quiet. Each one has unique um, uh, attributes to, to, for Snake to use. The horse is also to use when it comes into traveling long distances and and sneaking on its side, like going on the side of it, so you can take um, if you press X, you you understand what I'm talking about when you play. Um, when it comes to the D, uh, to D dog, he can make distractions, sniff enemies' locations without you even have to look for them, and it's also fun to have D dog just go around with a knife and stab his enemies. You know, it's always fun to see that. D Walker, on the other hand, is a lot like a like a baby Metal Gear, and you can basically customize that Metal Gear to your fullest potential. They can actually one of the most awesome buddies to have in the game as well. You can have a Gatling gun, flamethrower, rockets. Uh, he can have tranquilizer bullets, and he can basically like go in his cool little roller mode, and and he can even have a stealth mode. And and Quiet is much more the sniper of the group. She basically jumps in perching areas. She can scout for you. She can basically take care of enemies for you if you want her to. And yeah, she can take all. She can just a uh, full cover fire for you. Now all and all of these uh, buddies are fully customizable. 
the more you play with them, the more your bond actually grows with some of these characters. And it really is fun to actually uh, play with these uh, buddies. However, everyone will find their own favorite, and I actually enjoyed using all of them at different times in the game. It all felt unique to play with each and every one of them. And I was really was satisfied with the, um, the, the system, like I said before, the GMP system. This game is basically Peace Walker 2 in some ways, and I'm glad of that. I don't think it's a bad thing to call Peace Walker 2. I just feel like it's a lot like Peace Walker, that PSP game that came out in 2010, and I really do love what they brought here to play with, and I really am satisfied with what they showed overall. Now, basically, gameplay here is basically the best thing about this game. The choices on how to interpret each mission is amazing. You can go in full ambush, basically have a helicopter coming with bazooka with rockets destroying your base, and then you storm in a sandstorm where everyone's blind, including you, and also deafens their sound. Also makes it an awesome type of ambush and infiltration situation. Or you can just go in bullets blazing by yourself, go Rambo style, and feel like you're a badass. It all feel has this cool, unique way of playing. It makes it makes you feel like you are the king of your world. You basically have to rule the world in your way, and you basically have your way of controlling it. That's what I love about Metal Gear Solid Phantom Pain's gameplay, and I believe that this gameplay is something that I'll never get, uh, I, I, will, I will always enjoy having, and I never want to see this series without it ever again. So I really did enjoy the gameplay here. Overall, the gameplay is a perfect way to play this, uh, this is a perfect way to evolve the series, like I said before. This game is all about evolution, right, as you can tell. Now to talk about something that I really want to talk about for a while, but I decided to talk about story and gameplay first. Now let's start talking about the graphics. Ah, uh, we don't need to be spending so much time on this, alright? Visually, I played this game on PlayStation 4, just to let you guys know. And I must just say, this game is a beautiful game to look at, with its amazing Fox engine, and its visual graphic beauty of the Fox engine using lighting, shadow effects, visual motion capture, facial motion capture, all that visual effects that they have done in this game, it's been done to the maximum. It is visually, may I just say, beautiful to look at. A beautiful game to look at, and I already talked about some of the things that um, are already in the game. Stuff like um, sandstorm effects, the real, like, the real life, like day and night cycle, and um, basically tons of other stuff that I just have to mention, but I feel like you should really experience this game for yourself. It's amazing, my just Also, what's cool about the gameplay and the graphics combined is if your character gets hurt too much, yeah, Snake will actually have his armor and his, his costume and his skin will have blood on it. It will have stay like that until you go back to Mother Base and go take a shower. Because basically showering gets the blood off you and gives you more stamina, and physically and mentally. You know, so that's kind of cool. Like I said before, graphically, it, graphically, it's a simple game to talk about. Uh, also, sound design is also top notch, but it's also futuristic type of weapons and creature monsters type of thing. And the music is also really, really great as well. I'm not gonna be talking much only about the graphics here, but I'm just talking about the sound and music. And to be honest, that's really a, a lot of stuff that's really done in small little features, like I just said. Visually, the game, like I said, is beautiful, running at a smooth 1080p and 60 frames per second for me. I have not experienced one frame rate drop for those frame rate graphical lovers out there. I have just experienced something I must just say is visually beautiful and something that I want to see games look better than in the years to come. But it's going to be hard to do that now, isn't it? After almost 20 minutes of talking about this game, there's only one thing I had to say about Metal Gear Solid The Phantom Pain. It is my official game of the year for 2015. 
There are so many other games that really surprised me this year, but Metal Gear Solid Defense of Pain didn't just surprise me, it left me speechless. And it's why it's my favorite game of the year. It's a masterpiece, which is why my final verdict for this game is going to be an overall score of a 10 out of 10. A masterpiece doesn't mean it's perfect. In my eyes, it's almost perfect, but there's no such thing as that, is there? In my opinion, a masterpiece is something that's always going to be something that is going to be remembered. Always going to have that definitive moment. That moment that we realize you're playing a game that's not just a game, but something even more special than that. Metal Gear Solid 5 Phantom Lane has those moments. And you even have more soon, with the upcoming Metal Gear Online mode coming soon. Which will have uh, online modes, and base, hopefully I will be able to review that soon. Hopefully, I can, hopefully this is not the end of Metal Gear. And I wish that this was not the end for Kojima's path to a big step of greatness. They always say greatness is from small beginnings, and they are true, as greatness did begin in a small place, and it evolved into also one of the best franchises, in my opinion, the best game ever made, one of the best. Which is why it deserves a 10 out of 10, in my personal opinion. So guys, that's it for this video. If you guys want to see more reviews, check out my channel at dmichaeln97 on YouTube. You can follow me on Facebook as Michael Martinez, follow me on Twitter as dmichaeln97, and hopefully I'll see you guys again. So I'll see you guys on our next episode of dmichaeln97. This is dmichaeln97 signing out now. Bye everyone. Bye bye. Have a good one.